Well, now we've talked about the symptoms menopause might cause you, I thought we should also talk about how menopause might affect your body. I want to go through a few myths and then talk about some realities. Myth number one, women gain weight at menopause. That's actually not true. If you've noticed around this time you've been gaining weight, that's primarily due to the fact that you might have slightly altered your physical activity or you're eating differently. But menopause and the hormonal changes of menopause don't cause you to gain weight. But they do make some changes. So you might have noticed that you're actually getting a bit fatter around the tummy, that thickening around the waistline. That's because the fall in estrogen at menopause causes you to shift fat from your bottom and your thighs and other parts into your tummy. So that spare tie you might have noticed is in fact due to your hormone change. We actually talk about women going from a pear shape fat distribution to an apple shape fat distribution around this time. Different studies in different communities have shown that women will actually increase their abdominal fat at this time by about 20 to 40 percent. That takes me on to myth number two and that myth is that hormone therapy to treat menopausal symptoms causes women not only to gain weight but to gain weight around their middle. Not one but many studies have shown that women who take menopausal hormone therapy to treat menopausal symptoms are less likely to gain weight at menopause and are certainly less likely to gain weight around their tummy. So in fact, a concern about weight gain should not be a reason not to consider hormone replacement therapy. The other change virtually every woman will experience at menopause is bone loss. So you would have heard about osteoporosis and how later in life that can cause fragility fractures. Prevention of osteoporosis is really important. So the basics, bone is living tissue. It's always being formed and broken down. And in our younger years, that's in a balance. It's being formed and broken down in a way that our bones stay healthy and strong. Oestrogen stops bone breakdown. So at menopause, when your oestrogen levels fall, the bone breakdown is greater than the bone formation. So the overall effect is that you end up with less bone than you started with before menopause. This change actually starts just before you go through the menopause. So for women about two years leading up to the menopause, bone breakdown starts to increase and exceed bone formation. And this continues at quite a rapid rate for the first two years after the menopause. In general, women can expect to lose about 1% of their bone mass per year for about 10 years across the menopausal change. So if you start with a low bone density or a low bone mass, that can be quite substantial in terms of changing your risk for osteoporosis and fracture in later life. People most at risk of losing bone across the menopause are slim women. So if you're carrying a bit of weight, your risk of losing bone or a substantial amount in fact is slightly lessened. Importantly, if you go through a very early menopause, you'll have a much longer time in your life that you're at risk of losing bone. And it is very important you speak to your doctor about preventing bone loss at this time. It's important to talk to your doctor about whether it's appropriate for you to have any investigations to assess your bone density and then your doctor can guide you as to whether you should have any treatments to prevent bone loss and fracture for the future. In talking about healthy bones, we should also talk about calcium and vitamin D. There's a lot of confusion as to whether women should take calcium and whether people should be also taking vitamin D. Calcium is best absorbed from your diet. If you're not, eating foods such as dairy products and other foods very high in calcium, you should consider taking a calcium supplement. But not everybody needs to take calcium. There's a lot of discussion today about vitamin D. 
Vitamin D is essential for good health and very essential for healthy bones. Vitamin D is primarily made in our skin after exposure to sunlight. We also get some from our diet and in many countries foods like milk and breads are actually vitamin D supplemented. With the tendency of people to be sun safe and not be in the sun in the middle of the day, which is the best time to get the vitamin D being manufactured in your skin. And with people with darker skin more commonly living in climates where there's not as much bright sunshine, there is a greater tendency for people across the globe to be vitamin D deficient. The best way to get your vitamin D is still from careful sun exposure. But if you are indoors a lot, if you're a dark-skinned person living in either a very southern or northern latitude, you should be speaking to your doctor about the potential for your bit to be vitamin D deficient and whether or not you should be taking a vitamin D supplement. We know for certain that vitamin D is really important for healthy bones. It's still uncertain as to whether vitamin D makes any difference in terms of protecting you from heart disease or cancer. So we wouldn't recommend that you take a vitamin D supplement for these reasons. Vitamin D should primarily be taken to keep your levels normal to protect your bones. So now we've talked about the negative things, weight gain, bone loss. I want to talk to you about what you can do about that. Obviously having a healthy diet is really important. But physical activity is extremely important. It's something that you should incorporate into your daily life throughout your life. And by being physically active, you don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to go and walk for an hour every day. You can do gardening or walk up and down stairs instead of taking the elevator. So one of the best ways to be physically active is to incorporate activity into your routine daily life. Why is physical activity important? Well, of course, it burns up calories but it keeps your muscles strong. And the very special muscles you want to keep strong are your central or core muscles. These are really important for your balance. So it's quite obvious, if you fall over, you're more likely to have a fracture. If your core muscles are strong and your balance is better, you're less likely to fall over. You may have been told that to build bone strength, you should do weight-bearing exercise. It's in fact not that simple. So just walking, even if you're walking briskly for an hour, is not going to build strong bones. When our bones experience an impact, that is a message for the bone cells to get active and start forming new bone. So exercise that will improve bone strength has to involve a degree of impact. So jogging, hopping, skipping, any of those type of activities. I'm not suggesting everybody should do this, but I don't want you to be lulled into the sense that just going out and walking regularly is going to be strengthening your bones. Another experience you may be having at menopause is perhaps a change in the way you're thinking. I'm often told by women that they're experiencing a fogginess in their head. One woman also said to me she had washing machine brain. And basically what she was describing was that she couldn't get all her thoughts in order like she used to. So you might have noticed that you go to say something to somebody and you can't remember their name even though you've known them for years. Or you've walked into a room and can't remember why you've even walked in there. This is common. We believe it's due to the changing nature of hormones at this time, and it often resolves. It is something that you should not worry about. You can talk to your doctor about it, but it is a common thing that women experience. It may be in part due to the fact that you're having sleep deprivation, so clearly getting more sleep is gonna be helpful. There are a number of factors other than hormones that impact on our memory our concentration and how we think. So if you're getting sleep deprivation from menopausal symptoms, 
If you're worried about things at work or stressed, or if you're just really busy trying to juggle children, a household, work, looking after elderly parents, and other things that might be stresses in your life, these things will impact on your concentration and memory. So although hormone changes at menopause may be affecting your thought processes, you can manage this by also addressing other factors. Make sure you get plenty of sleep. Try and make sure that you have some downtime for yourself, some personal alone time. Do things you like to do that are relaxing and try and address stress and eliminate whatever stress you can. So the take home messages from this chat. Number one, women tend to gain weight as a result of aging, not menopause. But the hormonal changes at menopause cause women to gain weight around their tummy. Message number two, if you are considering hormone therapy and you take it, you are less likely to gain weight and abdominal fat than if you don't take it. Message number three, Menopause causes bone loss. You need to address this by making sure that you're having adequate calcium, vitamin D, and being physically active. And some women might need to take other medications to protect their bones. Message number four, memory and concentration. This might change because of your hormones, but it might also change because of other stress factors in your life. So it's something you should look into, talk to your doctor about, but primarily do not worry about it. So now we've talked about symptoms, we've talked about how hormones might affect your body. It's probably a good time now to talk about treatment options that you could consider at this time.